Hey, Magnus here, and today we're going to talk about chromatic aberration and why I think the 5D Mark IV is a bit flawed. Behind you with like the clouds of sky and everything, and still be able and we've to got the Rode video mic. Here we go. M50. What do you guys think? Wait, wait, wait. Now, before I continue on, I gotta say that this is the second time I recorded this whole thing where I ranted and raved about why this camera was flawed on, in the sensor and not the actual lens itself due to chromatic aberration. And then, of course, after I film everything and I'm editing and I'm just fiddling with the camera, I found a solution. Before that, let's see the problem and go back to what I just recorded before feeling the way I do now. Here we go. All right, so if you're new to this channel, I talk about cameras for video purposes and basically anything that has to do with that type of tech. So if you want, please subscribe and you'll enjoy my future videos and hit that notification. But on to the nitty gritty of this conversation. Recently, I did a video with the 5D Mark IV using my Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter 2.8 lens. Now this lens was designed for APS-C Canon cameras, but I use it with the 5D Mark IV, which is a full frame camera because the crop factor of the 4K recording is 1.74 times. So it actually would work perfectly with the 5D Mark IV to get a wider field of view um, at an affordable price. So I picked it up and I was pretty pleased with it. But one of the things that I noticed and actually noted in my review when I reviewed this lens really quick was the fact that it suffered from chromatic aberration. What chromatic aberration is, is basically it's like color fringing around your subject that happens when light passes through the lens and before it gets to your sensor it gets split and unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't land on the focal plane all at the same space or, or, or where it should land, which causes at extreme changes in contrast, some uh, red or purple uh, lines or, or blue and green lines on the other side. And then that just makes your picture or video uh, deteriorate in quality. I used the 5D Mark IV for a recent video when I went to B&H and I, com I compared this lens to a lens that I got to use, the 11 to 24 millimeter f4 lens from Canon, which pretty much had no color fringing. And I'm like, ah, why can't I get the same result out of this lens? And of course I thought, well, you know, it's a cheaper lens. I'm not going to get the same quality. But then I decided to experiment a little bit. I attached this lens to my NX-1 in some tests. And what I noticed that the NX-1, even when I'm zoomed out all the way, because the wider your field of view, the more the chromatic aberration will stand out. So I used it on the NX and it didn't have the chromatic aberration at all. So I'm like, okay, let me experiment. I took the Canon 5D Mark IV and filmed myself at 11 millimeters, I was zoomed out all the way, and I had the f-stop at f2.8. I had a filter on it so that, I, of course, I didn't absorb too much light and I can get the proper exposure that I would need for that shot. And I just walked and I filmed. Then I did the same with the Samsung NX-1. Same type of shot, walked in a film, kept it at f2.8. I used the photo diox um, adapter to be able to fit this on the Samsung NX-1. With the Samsung adapter, it adds the additional flange distance that you need when, if you were to like use it for a Canon camera, you have a, about a 44 millimeter flange distance and it sets that 44 millimeters for the Samsung NX mount. So I used that and kept the aperture wide open because I had no choice and it was gone. So there's no additional lens uh, elements in the adapter that I use for the Samsung NX camera, it just is just straight pass through. So I wanted to take that test a little deeper and I filmed basically in this room. Now in this room, I took the Samsung NX1 and the 5D Mark IV and I filmed in 4K to see, is it really a big difference? And it is. 
So, of course, I had to add a control to this test. So, I thought to myself, is it because maybe the flange distance isn't perfect? Is that what's causing it? Or maybe because a Canon camera would just result in this happening. So I took my Canon 6D and I mounted this lens to the Canon 6D and shot same results. F2.8 completely zoomed out and my results surprised me. Now, you, I don't get 4K out of the 6D. I got 1080p. So I filmed in 1080p and I've got no chromatic aberration. Now I tested the 5D Mark IV, not only 4K, but also in 1080p, and I got the same results. Now if you look at these shots, all of these shots are pretty much comparisons against the 5D Mark IV in similar settings. Now on the NX1, I recorded only in 4K because I felt that's all it was necessary and I got no chromatic aberration. But even if you zoom in, on the 1080p footage between the Canon 6D and the 5D Mark IV, the results are pretty clear. The 5D Mark IV is suffering from chromatic aberration, something that the 6D didn't have. Now, obviously this has to be due to the sensor, and I thought it was actually more of a lens feature, but it's, it's the 5D Mark IV that's causing this particular issue. Now I got the latest firmware installed on the 5D Mark IV, so that's not really addressed. Possibly it could be addressed with a firmware update, or perhaps not. Maybe it's actually built into the sensor. But I'm just looking for an answer. Until then, I'm just going to believe that the 5D Mark IV with this lens gives you chromatic aberration when your f-stops open all the way up. Now I did try to test by stopping down to f5 and f11 on the 5D Mark IV, and it does reduce the chromatic aberration. But unless you're in a well-lit scenario and you don't need that shallow depth of field, then you might have trouble. Now that you've seen that, now it's time to show you what exactly you have to do to pretty much fix that issue. So you're gonna go into menu, and then from menu, you're going to go right into the photo mode section and uh, menu number one. And under that, there's lens aberration correction. Now, by default, I had chromatic aberration correction turned on. But with the Tokina lens, you've got to turn it off. And then when you turn it off and start filming, apparently that chromatic aberration, when you're zoomed out, goes away. So as you can see right there, as I'm holding the camera and I'm zoomed all the way out, it goes away. You can't tell any chromatic aberration issues. But sometimes you got to experiment and see what you've got before you actually can get anything out of it. So if you learned anything or if you enjoyed this video, I know I learned something. Hit that like button, share, and of course hit that notification if you're already subscribed. But if not, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. Thanks, guys. See you later.